Welcome everyone. Today is Tuesday, February 13th, 2024, and this is a regular meeting of the City of Asbury Park Zoning Board of Adjustment. Chairman Avaloni, will you please call this meeting to order? I'd be happy to. This meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coaster and Asbury Park Press by publication of the annual meeting notice and posted on the Municipal Bulletin <coughs> Board and Municipal website. All notices are on file with the board secretary. Official action may be taken on the following matters before this board. Fire exits are located on the east and west sides of the council chambers, as well as the back of the building. I ask everyone with a cell phone to please mute it for the duration of this meeting. And this meeting is being recorded by APTV. Roll call, Marie. Wendy Glassman. Here. Daniel Harris. Here. Russell Lewis. Here. Jill Potter. Here. Tim Slick. Here. Vice Chair John Scully. Here. Chairman Avaloni. Here. Okay, so I, I feel like I'd be derelict without mentioning first it's Russell Lewis's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Russell. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> 58, ma'am. So um, I don't have the resolution, but. First up is an executive session. I'll read the resolution into the min minutes. Uh, whereas NJS 2 colon 4 12, the Open Public Meetings Act, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the board in certain circumstances, and whereas the board hereby moves to close the public hearing and convene and close the executive session in order to dis discuss the appeal of 503 8th Avenue LLC, currently pending in the Superior Court of New Jersey, pursuant to NJS 2 colon 4 12B. Seven, which is permitted by the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. And whereas it is anticipated at this time that the above matter will be made public at the conclusion of the litigation, including any appeals. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Asbury Park Zoning Board of Adjustment that it will by close the public portion of this meeting in order to convene in private executive session for the reasons set forth above. I make a motion to adopt the resolution to go into executive session. I'll second. Um, all, do I have to go through the whole roll call now? Yeah. Wendy Glassman? Yes. Daniel Harris? Yes. Russell Lewis? Yes. Jill Potter? Yes. Tim Slick? Yes. Vice Chair John Scully? Yes. Chairman Chris Avaloni? Yes. So, Executive Session, Mr. Beekman, would you please join us? I would. I'll make a motion to go back into regular session after the Executive Session. Second. Second. Yeah, take them. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All righty. We just have some housekeeping issues. Oh. Absolutely. Sorry for the interruption. No, no worries. Wendy Glassman? Here. Daniel Harris? Here. Russell Lewis? Here. Jill Potter? Here. Tim Slick? Here. Vice Chair John Scully? Here. Chairman Christopher Avalon? Here. All right. Uh, we just have. Some housekeeping issues before we get to the application. Um, how do we do this? Do we do this one at a time, Jim? Yeah, but you can do voice all in favor because this is just a memorialization of what you did formally at that meeting. That's what I thought. Okay, so, so I'll go through them real quick. Okay, so I make a, a motion to adopt the, the resolution for the Zoning Board Attorney for 2024. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? Great. I'm not doing wrong. No, all in favor. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Aye, thank you. I make a motion to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Planner CCH 2024. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? None opposed? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Secretary for 2024, Maria Marie Rodriguez. Second. 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 Discussion? Oh, Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Aye. I make a motion for to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Recording Entity for 2024 APTV. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? <laughs> I make a motion to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Conflict Attorney for 2024, the Beekman Attorney Firm. Second. 
discussion? No. Hearing none. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I make a motion to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Interim Board Engineer for 2024 Insight. I'll second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes out. I make a motion to adopt the resolution for the Zoning Board Conflict of Planners TNM for 2024. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Matter carries. So I think that it concludes our housekeeping issues. So we're ready for 211 DeWitt Avenue, Mammoth Investment Partners. Welcome back. It's been a long time. <coughs> the last time you asked me to give you a summary, would you like me to do that again? I would appreciate that, Mr. Cromer. Okay. This is an application to build a home on an undersized lot. The last times we were here, I think the board was concerned about the size of the home, so we went back to the drawing board and made the home smaller. We reduced the footprint, we reduced the number of bedrooms, and we enlarged the backyard. So this smaller house fits this property, and we ask at the end of the application that the board approve it. We are going to begin our presentation with the architect who is setting up right now. And Mr. Feldman, would you come forward? You want to swear in? Please raise your right hand, sir. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony about to give this matter the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I did. Okay. Put your hand down. Please state your name for the record and spell it. David Feldman, Epheson Frank, E-L-D-M-A-N. You appeared already on this application at the very beginning back in August, correct? I have. So you're already pre-qualified, your credentials are in, so there'd be no need to re-qualify you as an elected. Your license is still current in the state of New Jersey? Okay, thank you. Please proceed, Mr. Feldman. Okay. So uh, the, the first meeting that we uh, appeared before you, we um, had a home that was that consisted of four bedrooms and uh, a rear setback that was approximately six feet from the uh, rear property line. Uh, after that meeting and hearing the board's comments, what we did was we reduced the depth of the house from roughly 52 feet down to 48, I believe. So we picked up an additional uh, four feet to the rear, which and uh, in on the left side of the property, and we picked up an additional six feet on the right side of the property. When I go through the plan, you'll see there's a jog um, in the back of the building where previously it was, it was flush. Uh, in addition to that, we reduced the number of bedrooms. Um, previously, we had three bed, uh, four bedrooms, and now we're proposing a home that has uh, three bedrooms. So in terms of the uh, aesthetics and the look of the home, uh, similar to what we previously um, represented, initially, um, feeling that it still fits the uh, character of the neighborhood. Just a quick question. Uh, could you swear in? Yes. Professionals? Please raise your hand. You saw the <coughs> testimony that you're about to give this matter the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Please state your names for the record and your affiliation with the board. Donna Miller, board planner. Donna Bellman, board engineer. Thank you. Donna, did, did, with the reduction in size of, of the house, um, did this eliminate any of the variances that were required? Um, I want to say no. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm just, I, to get your question, I believe they're all the same. Um, just the uh, degree to which has changed. So, like, the building coverage got reduced, but they still need building coverage. Right. Um, they still need the side yards. They still need the front yard. Um, so there was no elimination of any of the variances. Uh, and they're still, uh, yeah, and then with the exceptions, they still have um, the garage offset and the, um, the width of the building is still deficient. So, so again, yeah, it's just, you know, to what extent. So it's just a, a degree percentage less. Okay. Thank you. 
Please proceed, Mr. Feldman. So on the on the first floor with the original home went straight across, giving us um, roughly a six foot offset to the rear property. We now incorporated a job to the rear. The overall home length is 46 feet, which is now giving us roughly 10 feet to the property line on the left, and with the offset into the breakfast area enough, about 12 feet on the right side. Um, the second floor, what we did was we reduced the uh, previously stated to four bedrooms, went down to one, two, three bedrooms. Um, and because this is a slab on grade, we created uh, a habitable attic. Excuse um, me, Mr. Phil. That's going to be A4 or 5. We're going to find out, right? Okay. We need to know what we can identify. This oh, sorry. Uh, we would be at A5. Okay. And tell us what it is before. Is that a plan you prepared? If so, sure. a A5 is a plan that we prepared consisting of two sheets. Uh, A1 is the elevation sheet. A2 is the, represents the floor plans. Okay. What's uh, the date on that? The date on these is 9 23 uh, yeah, the revised date. That's at 92820 is what we have on that plan. Okay. And has that been submitted to the uh, board and board plans? As far as I know, it has. Okay, okay. good. Okay. 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 No, that's fine. I just have to identify it. And that was prepared by you or your office? My office. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Sorry for the interruption. It's okay. Uh, as I was saying, the um, loft area or habitable attic uh, to give the, uh, the home an area for uh, entertainment, uh, play area for, for, some, uh, for some children. Was there a, a closet in the previous plan? Was, has that changed? Uh, I don't remember, to be honest with you. Uh, if the board so wishes us to remove the closet, we will. Okay. Uh, that's the original one? Mm -hmm. This is from 19, 818. I can't see a thing. Yeah, no, okay. the original one. And are these, are, are these um, short walls around the staircase in, in this loft area? Or around the staircase, or are they all the way No, the, the, the intent was that these are full walls, however, there's no door or anything at the top of the stair. But you said they are full walls? Or at the bottom of the stair separating it. Right. Again, if the board chooses or, or wishes us to put half walls or railing to open it up more and potentially eliminate the potential uses this as being a bedroom, we would certainly abide to that as well. Are there egress windows up there? Uh, there are there are windows up there. Yes. Are they egress? Yes. Okay. Regardless, they're not. Someone will probably use it as a bedroom. It's one point. What I'm thinking. I mean, I, I I don't have an issue with it being used as a bedroom or this being a four bedroom house. So it's I don't think it's really an issue. I'm just trying to get clarity on it. It's not the intent for it to be used as a bedroom. From my understanding. It's a great summary. Thank you. I'm sorry. Is the uh, first floor plan identifies the house as uh, yeah. the attic. The foundation plan says 18 feet 2 inches. I'm only asking because of the impact. Um, it looks like the fault plan utilized the 18 feet four I just want to make sure uh, yeah, the performance is okay. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to have a further look. Yeah, we would go down to. So that's the 18. We would go to the 18 for a while. Okay. As opposed to the 18 or 2, that's the foundation is. That's probably just the type of. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that, that's what happened. So the, the, whole, the whole third floor is new. It wasn't, there it wasn't was no part third, of the original. It wasn't part of the original. This was a two-story house. Now it's a three-story. Two and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. As, as, yeah. With a as calculated. In the attic. Yeah. Which is in conformity to the neighborhood as well. The majority of those homes are two and a half to three stories as but that attic doesn't have to be a bedroom. It could be anything. It could be. I'm sorry. The attic doesn't necessarily have to be a bedroom. It could be anything. Correct. It could be a sewing room. It could be a recreation cool. area for kids. Correct. Whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which is what the entire. It could even be, you know, for for storage of. Because again, there's no basement. Okay. Um. One question I had. I don't know if this is for you. But with the heat that's going to be escaping upstairs because now it's partially open, um, are you going to have fans up there or returns in reference to the um, airflow? Uh, I would leave that up to the mechanical contractor, but I would assume there will be. Okay. You know, there'll be heat and air conditioning up there, yes. You know, you know the heat's going to rise, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to serve as a, a cost to the to the tenant or the owner as to keeping the downstairs warm enough because you're gonna lose because that area is open now, the heat is gonna go up there. Right. Okay, so the location of the vents is important. Also the fans, okay. So I mean that's just my concern. How to keep costs down for whoever the potential buyer is or the potential tenant is. You know, not have water heat go up and the downstairs free. Yeah, understood. What's the size of the driveway? Uh, the engineer could testify to that on his uh, site plan. Okay. Any further questions regarding the the, the house itself? Don, in your in your report, you said that the first floor was narrowed, but the second floor wasn't. Yeah, I was going to ask. So, Can you just clarify the, the difference in the width or the areas of yeah, the first so, floor so, and the second floor? Yeah, so the, so the first floor um, oh, is yes. 18 feet. The second floor was 1810. That was actually a miscommunication between ourselves and the engineer, which the, your experts brought up. So we are going to reduce the second floor to not exceed 850 square feet, which again, the engineer could testify to that as to, to that. So it'll be, it'll be the same width as the first one? Correct. Okay. What will be the ultimate width of the second floor? Uh, the 18, 18 feet. Right, that's gonna match the first floor? Yes. Okay. So the, the sketch you have here of rear elevation is not correct? Correct. Got it, okay. So where were you taking that out of on the second floor? Uh, it'll probably reduce the bedroom width or although I'm gonna take a look and see if we can redevelop the bathroom area to sort of perhaps over here to widen the width and just make a closet for a long washer drive. Will that also reduce the width of the third floor? Yes. Okay, so everything's gonna be eighteen feet? Yes. Boy. <clears throat> Thank you. What does that do to the overall square footage? Reduce it. It's going to reduce the overall square footage and it's also going to reduce the setbacks yeah. uh, on the right so side of the property as well. You're going to increase your setback. It's going to increase it. So thereby lessening the severity of the variance. That's correct. And it further reduces the building coverage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Not so, by much, but yeah. So it's going to have a, on these small lots. It's going to have a domino effect to the positive. You got to yes. get, You need to get this on the record so the board understands that. Okay. Okay. So it's first and second. Well, I think the engineer is going to well, go. Yeah, that's the engineer is going to go into more depth and yeah, but so. he's verifying that yes, the whole building will only be eighteen feet of width. Right. All three floors. Okay, I got it. That's fair enough. Thank you. But we're not sure how it's going to affect the second floor, whether it comes out of some combination of the hallway or one of the yes. one of the rooms. Yes. And what is it? Ten inches. Correct. Eight. Well, his four plan says 
Okay. Right, but he's specifying that the whole building will only be 18 feet wide, not 18 feet. Well, if it works at 18.2 and the board's going to... I don't know what works. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the, the block plan currently has a 18.2. All right. So what we would do then is we would adhere to the 18 foot 2 dimension as the foundation is indicated. Okay. We will widen the first floor to 18 foot 2 and we will carry that dimension all the way up through the second and third floor. I, I think I'd like to know exactly what the setbacks are now, are going to be. That'll probably be, That'll be here. Here. Okay. Which is still going to have a positive effect on the setbacks, on the lock coverage, and everything else that we previously were talking about, the 18 okay. 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 So what are we talking, eight inches now? Eight inches on the second floor, yes. Eight inches? Yes. You're From adding two inches on the first floor. Currently represent. Okay. Any further questions for the architect? For Mr. Feldman? Board professionals? Um, right, so uh, where are the mechanicals? Uh, is there anything in the attic space? Yes. The mechanicals are depicted here and here. But you're going to have a HAC condenser on the. Yes, which I believe is shown on the engineering house, the location of that. Any further questions for Mr. Feldman? All right, I'll open it up to the public. Anyone in the public for Mr. Feldman regarding his testimony? Seeing no one, thank you, Mr. Feldman. Thank you. Check, please raise your right hand. <coughs> Tom swear from the customer you have to give us time with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record and spell it for us. Charles Sermont, S U R M O N T E. You have been previously qualified as a professional engineer, correct? Before the board, you tested. I have, yes. Are you still licensed? I am. And in good standing? I am. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sermont. So, um, but, uh, if you want me to start, I'll start uh, with the first question. Um, the size of the driveway, how big is it? Okay, yeah. Um, the You'll driveway, be doing one curb cut, right? I'm sorry? Uh, there's got to be a curb cut. The and, curb cut's 12 feet wide. Okay. The driveway itself is, um, let me get the exact dimension. It's a little less than eight feet wide. It consists of it consists of two 30 inch wide strips with a 33 inch island in between. It's about it's about seven foot nine inches altogether, out to out. Um, if I could just back up a little bit and just tell you what our thought process was when we redeveloped this plan. Okay. You might recall that I testified that due to the narrowness of the site and the unsuitability of the soil, that it would be difficult, if not impossible, for us to strictly comply with the enhanced stormwater management requirements that come with a development that introduces over a thousand question. square feet. Yes. When we realized we were reducing the building down, I strongly suggested that we develop the site in such a manner that we try to stay just below that thousand square feet. Now, uh, the driveway affords us two things. It affords us the opportunity to stay below a thousand square feet, and it provides a location central to this, more central to the site than the two property lines to capture, store, and to the degree that we can infiltrate some stormwater before it's released out to the road. 
um, because we do intend on collecting the roof drainage, piping it underground, bringing it to the front of the property. And the most appropriate location to store and dispose would be a more central location so as to ensure that we don't have any negative impacts on the crawl spaces of the neighboring homes. We appreciate that. So those, so we, so we were able to do that, um, but I do, I take responsibility for this snafu with the building coverage. I, I based my calculations on the first floor area of 845 square feet as opposed to the, I didn't catch the second floor overhang that introduced an additional 20 feet of square footage. So, um, holding the 18 foot two width, we are able to stay below a thousand square feet. But again, we, you know, we're doing what we can do to uh, minimize the impacts of storm water. So this becomes a minor development. Is, is that what you're? Is that yes, you're, we'd like to. We'd like it to be reviewed as a minor development rather than a major development, or whatever the terminology is. Well, maybe, maybe Doug can explain. Yeah. So uh, the threshold. So there's two. We'll call them three branches of stormwater management. There's major development, which is the one acre of disturbance, quarter acre of new impervious. Um, we're not there. Minor development in Asbury, but it's specific to Asbury Park, um, is a thousand foot of new impervious surface or 5,000 square feet of land disturbance. What Chet is testifying is that they are under those thresholds. So it wouldn't be a, a minor development either. Um, so the final branch would just be to ensure that post-development runoff rates don't exceed pre-development runoff rates to adjacent properties of record, which with the implementing of a roof leader collection system, which Chet has already shared with me in the plan, I took a look at it before the meeting, um, that would satisfy um, that, that portion of the stormwater management requirement. Great. Sounds good. And um, I mean that's the main that that's the main revision to my site plan would be the driveway, the size of the house, and the implementation of the drainage. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Sermon? So, what are the side setbacks now that we're we're using eighteen two? Well, it'll still be three foot two inches on the left. Three okay. Three foot one inch on the left, about three foot nine inches on the right. And building coverage? Building coverage. Building coverage will not exceed <laughs> to stay under the thousand square feet. I have a I have about eight hundred and forty eight. So right now the footprint is eight hundred and forty five square feet, and that just works with a few square feet of breathing room. I don't want to cut it right to the number, so eight hundred and forty five square feet will be the building coverage which will be the 18 foot two wide version of Mr. Feldman's house that he spoke to earlier. Okay. Unless in dealing with the architect, well, again, that'll affect the setbacks. If you wanna, you know, we couldn't decide if we were gonna take a foot out of the back of the house, take away the overhang on the right, or do a little combination of the two, but we'll, uh, what are you? Well, well you yeah. need to know. <laughs> no, I know. No, we just, yeah. You're being a little ambiguous, <laughs> Mr. No, 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 he's already no testified overhang. that there's no. He's already testified that there's no overhang. So the decision to make flush. make the house the dimensions that the architect spoke about. Yeah, so how and, that will relate to. And now we can. And then we'll, at 18 foot two, if you'd like, we can move the building over three or four inches. And get and get three foot four inches on each side instead of being tight to the left side, if that's more pleasing. No, we're presenting it at eighteen point two, and it's under a thousand square feet. That's correct. But just as far as the setbacks go, we can go three foot four inches on each side, rather than three foot one, three foot nine. Donna, do you? I want to get back to the building coverage. Sure. <laughs> so I'm sorry. What did you say is the footprint square footage? 845 square feet. 845? Yes. Okay. So that's going to be a 45% building coverage. Yes. Okay. okay. Just to clarify that. So that's, that's what I was trying to get at. Yes. Thank you. 
whether we want to shift it so that it's centered on the lot or more to one side or the other. It's up to you guys. A any further questions for Mr. Sermont? Do you, are, are you recommending any kind of, uh, so for the ribbon driveway, Yeah. Um, the grass island piece, is there, it's just going to be long or are you recommending, you know, like a grass tree just in case we get a little off the pads? <sighs> I was, I, I was just going to propose to leave it at lawn just so that it, just so that it, as much, as much greenery in the front yard as possible rather than having a eight foot wide, uh, what appears to be an eight foot wide driveway. I just thought it would, might look better if we put lawn in and 30 inches is, you know, an adequate width for the ribbon strips. surface would the driveway be? Would you use in concrete? Concrete. concrete. Yes. <clears throat> and your green is pipeable underneath the front of the house, out to the sidewalk, mm -hmm. on the curb, right? You say you want to pipe the water Just a little louder, my hearing's shot. Roof leaders under the front of the house. Under the front. The property in the front. Roof, Roof leaders are going to come down the side of the house, come across the front of the house, and discharge into a stone trench underneath the grass strip between the between the driveway strips. Okay. Good enough. Thank is, you. Is there a path from the front door to the uh, well, driveway? I, I don't know that there's a sidewalk. Is there? Yes. yes. Yeah, we have a we have a, we have one step down to a uh, three foot walkway to the driveway. Okay. <coughs> Which is basically where the car is, there's no, you know, that's where the tires are. There's no little right. gap where you can actually walk next to the car without being in the grass. For the stormwater, do we need to make that part of the resolution or are you okay with what the testimony was? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, with the shit Any further questions for Mr. Sermont? All right, I'll open it up to the public. Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Sermont. Thank you. We have one more professional, but before he comes, I want to admit into evidence the third notice that I gave to the neighboring property owner to fulfill the requirements of offering the property to okay. uh, neighboring properties. This is, this is the rear? This is the rear. And you've already given us the two sides. And we've I've already given you left and right side. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So I think we're on exhibit six. Yes. So exhibit six is a letter from me to the property in the rear. That's 208 Elizabeth Avenue. And it's uh, addressed to SNS Properties, LLC, dated August 18th, 2023. What does it say? It's an offer to sell this property or purchase the neighboring lot. You want me to read the whole letter? No, I just need to know that you covered the basis. Okay. Um, it's an offer to sell our lot at fair market value, see if the neighbor is interested in doing that or selling their property to us. And we're indicating that we intend on using this in order to establish our hardship. Okay, fair enough. And what if any response did you receive to that letter? None. Okay. Right. Did you receive any responses from any of the neighbors, Mr. Cromer, or no? Yes, we received a response seven months ago, but haven't heard anything since. So we look at it as abandoned and we don't believe anybody is here. Right, what, you don't have to get into too much of it, but what was the sum and substance of the response? <coughs> Buy yours or sell theirs? They were showing some interest in buying, uh, but it didn't go anywhere. 
Okay. They, they offered you a price? They offered a price less than the assessed value. Okay. On which side is that? Which property was that? To the right or the left facing the property? One minute, please. It was to the right. Okay. Um, and also, I overheard the board attorney speaking. Also attached as exhibit six are the certified mail receipt and the return receipt indicating that the letter was received. Okay. Yeah. Sure. This is just a curiosity. It's nothing to do with your Not attorney. a problem. It was a Okay, fair enough. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cromer. Yeah, we'll give that to Marie. Uh, Jim, please raise your right hand. Yep. So I'm going to swear to firm. Uh, testimony about to give this man the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record and spell it. James W. Higgins, H I G G I N S. <coughs> and for the <coughs> excuse me, for the record, I am a licensed planner in the state. I've been licensed for approximately 45 years. My license is current, and I have testified before this board on a number of occasions, as well as numerous boards throughout the state. We, we accept your yes, credentials, Mr. Higgins, and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why I'm still doing this. <laughs> <laughs> the same reason I am. <laughs> okay. Scrum your words. Okay. Could you, did you review this application? Yes, I did. I reviewed the application. I reviewed the reports from the board's professionals. I visited the site on a number of occasions. I'm, I'm very familiar with the area of the site. Have you considered the planning perspectives of this application? Yes, I have. It's in, it's just, I see it. This is a classic hardship case where due to the size of the site, the width of the site, the area of the site, and actually the depth of the site, it's impossible for anybody to construct a residence on this site without variances. Um, when I say that, the variances that are necessary are, first of all, the minimum side yard setback for one side and a minimum side yard setback for both sides. Six feet required for one side, 12 feet accommodation for both sides. In addition, the ordinance requires that the minimum width of the building be 20 feet. When you have a 25 foot wide lot and you require 12 feet combined side yard setbacks, clearly you can't put a 20 foot wide building on it. So there's no way a building could be constructed on this lot without some sort of variance. The area within which the site's located, there are a lot of 25 foot wide lots. The two properties to the north of the subject site are identical in width and area and depth to the subject site. The property to the immediate south of the site is 25 feet wide. Also, it's deeper though. I think it's a through lot. So, what's being what is the site is consistent with the character of the area. There's other lots. There are some other lots also that are similar in area to this site. Um, the applicant's proposing a building that, in my opinion, fits in with the character of the area. Fits in with the scale of the site. The 18 foot wide building with either it's 18 foot or 18 two, whether you have 3.4 feet on either side or 3.5 feet on either side. It's, that, it's the best you can do on this site. Anything that narrower than that is a very difficult house to, to live in. If you conform to the side yard setbacks, you'd have an 11 foot wide building. And that, that would be quite frankly, look like a railroad car on the site. I don't, and it would be probably non-functional. So what's being proposed here is the best that I can see for the site. Um, when you look at the zone, the zone requires 5,000 square foot lots. If you have the minimum 50 foot lot width, the minimum depth you can have to have a conforming lot is 100 feet. And while your ordinance doesn't have a minimum depth requirement in the zone, it stands to reason that the ordinance would anticipate at least a 100 foot deep lot. So you've got a 75 foot deep lot, it's 75% 
of what you would expect in the zone. You've got a 25 foot wide lot, which is 50% of what the ordinance permits. And the area of the lot at 18,075 square feet is 37.5% of what is in the zone. So clearly it's a substantially undersized lot. 1,800 versus 1,875. 8, 8, yeah, you said 18,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Did okay, I say 18,000? Sure yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. So there's a minimum front yard setback variance. 18 feet is, is proposed and the ordinance requires uh, 25 feet. So there's a seven foot difference. And it's important, the 18 feet is important because you have a three bedroom house, the residential site improvement standards require two parking spaces for a three bedroom house and allows that two parking spaces to be included in a garage as well as a driveway that is at least 18 feet deep. So the 18 foot setback in the front yard I think is, is appropriate for the, for the for the site and is necessary in order to have the adequate parking on the site to meet the residential site improvement standards. The lot coverage that's being requested is 45%. And that gives you a building of a footprint of 845 feet. If you had a fully conforming lot, the footprint could be 1,500 feet, square feet. So. Again, what's being proposed here is a little bit more than half what could be put on a conforming lot. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that one of the uh, standards as far as a hardship variance is whether or not the site, the, the site can be utilized as it would otherwise be utilized as it were a conforming lot. And clearly here a 1,500 square foot building wouldn't be appropriate even though on a conforming lot you could put that. But an 845 square foot building, which has a uh, lot coverage of 45%, is appropriate in my opinion. So, so when I look at the variances that are required, uh, I think that because of the significantly undersized nature of the lot, the character of the area within which the site is located, and the, the fact that the, the building is consistent with is in scale with the lot and consistent with the, and the scale of the surrounding neighborhood, I think that the application can be approved. I think there's a substantial hardship and I don't see a substantial negative impact. Thank you. Does that complete your yes, testimony, yes, Mr. Yes. Higgins? Thank you. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. Higgins? Board professionals, any questions? Anyone in the public? for Mr. Higgins' testimony. Seeing none, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Cromer, back to you. I don't have any, any comments. I think you did a great job of summarizing why the house fits this particular property. And we ask that the board approve the application. So before we get there, I'm going to open it up for comment by the general public. Anyone in the public who would like to make a comment in favor, either in favor or against this application? Seeing none, then we move on to deliberation and voting. So, anyone on the board want to have any comments themselves? I appreciate you listening to the board the last time you were here and making changes and I appreciate all your professionals coming here tonight and explaining those changes to us and I think at the end it's a better application than it was. I also took note of what you said uh, if the board will approve it one of the conditions of approval will be the uh, insertion of the stormwater uh, restriction scheme downspouts underground out to the street. Also, that the entire building structure will be 18 feet, two inches, yeah. as opposed to... Yeah, revised plans. Right. And the centering of it will be left to the applicant? Or do we have an opinion? I have no opinion in regards to that. Yeah, they, they yeah. Are, don't just leave it to them. If it's in the plan as such, at whatever distance and you don't ask to change it, then that's what it should be. So it's consistent with the plans. Okay. 
Were there any other conditions that were listed, Jack? No. That I, excuse me for one second. No, not that I have. Those are the two primary. There's the usual, you gotta publish, you gotta do all that. There's some boilerplate conditions that are in every other place. So I'll make a comment and say, Mr. Higgins, we understand that this is a hardship situation, but in order to build at all on this property, it would require variances. Yeah. So we well understand that. Yeah, the only other thing I would add, I'll point to you from a legal perspective, uh, applicant did what it's expected to do under the land use law to either offer it to somebody else, to try and make their property more conforming, or try and get other property to make theirs more conforming. No, it didn't really go any place. They, they fulfilled their uh, case law obligation, so that, this is what we're left with. Thank you, Jack. Okay. So I'll make a motion to adopt 211 DeWitt Avenue with the conditions stated. And I'll second it. And that was uh, Daniel Harris? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Wendy Glassman? Yes. Daniel Harris? Yes. Russell Lewis? Yes. Jill Potter? Yes. Tim Slick? Yes. Vice Chair Scully? Yes. Chairman Avaloni? Yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Cromer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're out of here. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. second. <laughs> Happy birthday, Russell. Thank you. Yeah, Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Russell.